In this tutorial in CyberLink PowerDirector, we're going to show you a technique where you can take an object or a person and cause it to remain color where everything around it becomes black and white. That creates a very interesting contrast. In another tutorial, we showed you how to do this using only PowerDirector. But the limitation of that was we had to freeze the action where the change takes place. There'll be many times when you don't want to freeze everything. You want the motion to continue in the video, and we'll show you how to do that in this tutorial. So if you'd like to look at this example, we'll get back to the tutorial and show you how to do it in a moment. One thing you need to note is that in order to do what we're going to show you, you need a copy of Color Director. You can either buy it as a standalone program or it's available in some of the subscription options in PowerDirector 365. We're going to start by clicking on our video clip on track number one, and then we're going to click on the Fix Enhance button above our timelines. That opens a panel up on the left. We're going to click on Color Director, our critical program for using this technique. That will open up my copy of CyberLink Color Director. It will also load the clip into Color Director that I can use. First thing I need to do is determine when I want the transition to occur. So I'm going to drag to the right. The camera pans up on the young man in the apron. We'll stop maybe here and make this the launching point for our transition. Next thing I need to do is mask the young man. And in this case, I need to use one of the tools that are under Regional Adjustment Tools on the left panel. If you don't see these tools, make sure the arrow is pointing down and not right. You can click on it and you will see the tools you need. I'm going to use the second tab from the left, the double circles with a crosshair. That's the Motion Tracking Mask. I'll click on that. And immediately I see I can use it as a brush or as an eraser to add to the mask or take from it. The critical thing you need to know is you can use the Alt key on the keyboard to switch from one to the other. I can control the size of the mask by dragging, or I can control it by using the up and down arrows. I'm going to leave the Auto Edge Selection implemented in this particular case. So I'll just take my mouse and this brush size and we will attempt to isolate the gentleman and the apron from the rest of our video clip. And you can see it does a pretty good job of determining what belongs and what doesn't. The hardest part is the lower right part of his sleeve because we have two colors that are pretty close together. And if we're careful, we can get it without further editing. And I think we're there. Good. So now I have the mask. Now to apply the mask in motion requires that I go below the preview screen and click on the dotted circle and the triangle. This will start my motion tracking. It will put an outline around my mask and attempt to keep the mask functional during the rest of the video. And so we see it working here. It's pretty good. I have a little problem on the sleeve, but in a second we'll find a bigger problem. You notice the lady on the left here, that becomes part of the mask, and I don't want that. And it actually said, I, uh, I'm stuck. I need some more help. I'll click on OK, and for the purpose of the tutorial, we'll resume the mask tracking anyway. And now we have some bleed on the right as well as on the left. We'll show you how to fix that in a moment. I'll click on OK when I'm done. The next thing I want to do is invert my mask. So to do that, I'm going to click on the dotted square with the dotted circle inside it to the right of the word mask, and that will simply invert it. I want the background to be black and white. So I'm going to drag down till I get to my saturation values. I'm going to drag each one of them all the way to the left. Now, if I were going to be uh, very careful and 
uh, very special in the way I approach this, I would probably keyframe this transition, but we're going to make it abrupt just to shorten the tutorial. So when I play the clip from the beginning, we find the camera pans up to the young man and gets to the frame where we started our mask. He remains color, it turns to black and white, and everything stays in motion. But we have a problem here because other things got caught in our mask that we didn't want. And so we're going to show you how to fix that. It starts in these frames here where the, the woman's head begins to move and we begin to see the mask is larger than we want. How do we fix that? We're going to have to modify the mask. In many cases, you find that the colors adjacent to the mask are close enough that it doesn't work the way you hoped it would. So you do have to do some modification. Now, one of the things I like to do when I'm doing this is, is see my keyframes. To do that, we're going to click on the clock, the third tab in the upper left panel, and that will open up all my keyframes. Whatever keyframe I happen to be in, this will show me where I'm at. Now, I'm also going to drag and magnify all these keyframes to the maximum area so I can see this frame by frame. And I'll drag up. So now I see my mask controls, my mask keyframe. Now I'm going to, on this particular frame, I'm going to deselect the woman and it'll set a keyframe. I can go back frame by frame and forward frame by frame and do the same thing to make sure everything is exactly the way I want it. Now you may be able to get by skipping a couple of frames, but if you don't do this carefully, what you're going to find is that this will get you into a situation where it begins to flicker. I can use the comma period key or the period key to move frame by frame. And I think I see some here I want to change. So we'll change that just a little bit. And then I'll use the period key to move forward a frame. And now we're to an area I haven't looked at yet. And so you see the process. And if we wanted the, this to be perfect, if we were working especially in a commercial environment, I would probably take the time to edit my mask frame by frame like we're doing here. It doesn't have to be perfect, but you sure don't want something that is, uh, is obviously wrong as what we had when we started. We won't take the time to show you all of that, but let's assume we're finished. And when you're done, all you need to do is close the Color Director program by clicking on the X. It will return you to Power Director, where you can make additional edits if you want in your clip. And again, we'll look at this and we'll see it pan up to the man and the colors will change. And for the first few frames, the woman's head will not be color. It will stay black and white because we changed those frames. And then when we quit making our adjustments, obviously it turned back to color, which we don't want. But this is an example of how you can make that shift and cause color and black and white to be one of your highlights in your video in CyberLink PowerDirector.